Hello and welcome to Fracture Synopsis 1. We'll cover an overview of the topic of fracture and then look at the stress concentration factor. Okay, so let's start off by addressing a common point of uh, confusion and that's the difference and sometimes the incorrect usage of these two words interchangeably or the difference between fracture and failure. So we've seen fracture at the end of uh, every stress strain curve that we've drawn for a typical metal. Often we draw a little X there. So we said that's actually the point of fracture and that's correct. And that's where the part has broken into two uh, pieces. And we can in fact say that fracture is broken into two or more pieces because um, there's certainly cases where the uh, fracture involves more than just two pieces, although typically in a tensile sample it, it does just break into two pieces. So fracture has involved uh, something breaking like that into multiple pieces. Failure, on the other hand, uh, failure is just when something does not meet the requirements. So, uh, you know, our requirements might be um, to support uh, someone's load at a certain height, as is the case, say, for uh, a chair. And you can imagine if we designed a chair out of rubber. Um, okay, so we designed a rubber chair. Well, when that person sits on that rubber chair, it's going to deform uh, s substantially. The the legs will probably buckle, and uh, you know that that chair is going to fall down to. Uh, a pretty low level above the ground and might not really be a very useful chair. In fact, you'd probably say that that chair has failed. Uh, you sit on it and you end up sitting on the floor, essentially. You may stand up and find that the chair has not plastically deformed, it's not fractured, um, but it still failed because it didn't uh, fulfill the requirements of that design. So now that we understand that fracture involves a crack, we should understand what exactly a crack is. A crack is a localized breakdown of bonds in, in a material. Um, could be internal, um, as I'm trying to illustrate here. That's a that's a piece of a material. It could be as well uh, a little scratch, say on the surface. That could in fact be a crack, and where a larger crack uh, initiates and propagates from. <coughs> And I'd say just mention a couple of uh, a couple things that happen to a crack. So a crack will will form uh, on in a material either inside or on the surface, and then that crack will will grow and it'll get longer. So crack formation is um, what we often call crack initiation. Okay, and as I said, it's often on a sharp uh, feature, and then crack growth is uh, referred to often as crack propagation. And it's interesting to, to note that that crack propagation uh, stage there can actually occur in a slow fashion. That's actually when the crack is still uh, described as being stable. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we can have the crack propagation be uh, be fast, and that's of course when it's unstable. And the transition from that slow uh, stable regime to the fast unstable regime is right in there when the crack becomes critical reaches a critical length. Okay, so let's take a stab at um, quantifying the, a, a crack. And to, to do that, we can say, let's take a general piece of material and apply a stress to it. Okay, so we apply some, some stress, sigma naught. And we say inside that material is a crack. Okay. And I'm going to generalize the shape of that crack as an ellipse. It's an elliptical crack. Okay. And uh, I've also, you can see, I've, I've drawn a little red circle in there at the crack tip. And so that's the <coughs> showing the, the sharpness of the crack. Uh, of the crack. So if there's a small little circle that fits the radius of the tip of the crack, that would be a sharp crack. <coughs> And if it was a large circle that fit into the radius of the crack tip, it would be a blunt crack. So we actually are going to call that um, rho, the Greek letter, lowercase letter rho, for the radius of curvature of the crack tip. And remember, if it's a small radius of curvature, it's a sharp crack. And if it's a large radius of curvature, it would be a blunt crack, not sharp. And then we can quantify the length as well as 2a. The reason for this is it's only, you could think of it as, as two cracks, one to the left, and then there's another crack to the right, each with a length of a. 
<clears throat> and if we do that, we can, uh, and it's been done, you can work out what the stress concentration factor is. So that would be, well, what's the maximum stress at the tip of the crack versus the applied stress? And that's actually called, because it's a factor, sometimes it's called K sub T, where T refers to the tip of the crack. And it turns out that that's roughly equal to 2 times root A over rho. And intuitively, this makes a bit of sense, because if it's a longer crack, A is larger, it's going to be a larger stress concentration factor. And if rho, you imagine, was small, it's a sharp crack, you'd imagine that the maximum stress would increase. Okay, so what have we seen? We've seen that fracture involves a crack. Fracture involves a crack. Involves a crack. And we saw that the crack <coughs> initiates, it starts typically on a, or often on a uh, a sharp surface, and then the crack grows, or it, it propagates, and that growth can be slow initially until it becomes critical in length, at which point it becomes fast or unstable, and that's final fracture. And we finally quantified the stress concentration factor at the tip of the crack as 2 times the root of A over rho.